Shake somebody's hand. Smile real big, man. Just going to take this seat. Say, man. Smile real big. Get some money back. I know you need it. Amen. Yes. Delighted that you're here today. Certainly, I want to greet our YouTube audience. Thank you for tuning in. We are in an alternate location today. Uh, we find ourselves in Isaac's Hall, one of the subrooms of the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center, but we're here uh, serving the Lord on a Saturday evening. I have fun on Saturdays because I can dress down, no suit and tie required. I can just come and hang out. Uh, it's more intimate, but we're certainly blessed. The people of God have come with an expectation, not of me, but of their Father, their God, their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and His Holy yes. Spirit. So we're glad you tuned in. Thank you for taking the time. We invite you to come down on a Sunday when we have our normal worship or on a Saturday service. We're here every Sunday, except for this coming one, every Sunday, uh, here at the 1221st Avenue in the city of Corvo, Iowa, again, at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center, where we've got a warm seat welcome for it, welcome for you. They say a church alive is worth the drive, so if you're in the area, come on and see us. We'd love to have you. Would you yes. welcome our YouTube audience, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Right. Praise God. I am delighted that you're here. I look around and see if we have your first time guests. I don't think, I think everybody's home. Amen. Amen. Glad you're home tonight. Wherever those uh, other people are that are doing traveling, I certainly appreciate the protection that God has given them, each one of them. Amen. Amen. Uh, when you're not here, aren't you glad people are praying and speaking over you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm glad that they're speaking and praying over me. So anyway, let's get into the Word of God. Give me 45 minutes, if I could, please, if I could have that. And I am going to just go through this. Something that the Lord said to my heart. We're still talking from the book of Galatians here. And uh, one of the things that has really intrigued me as I move forward is being a uh, disciple. Uh, I, I, you, know, you know the progression that we declare around here. You are first a sinner. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then you become born again, so you're saved. Amen. 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 And so you're a Christian. And then the next thing that happens is you become what? A believer. Right? Amen. And if you are, uh, and this is Jesus' teaching, it's not mine, but as a, as a believer, the next progression of where you want to be is called what? Disciple. A disciple. So we're here to make disciples. Just for the weight of this, I'm going to put that right there for you. Now, uh, with that being said, let me and let me let me back up just a minute. I want to acknowledge uh, Robin Ferries on last Sunday night did oh, a masterful yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. She really she really broke it down and blessed our souls. And we had a, a visiting praise and worship team, and that was so cool, man. They were they just blessed us. Uh, from uh, Rama Praise and Worship Center, and we're delighted that they were here. So, uh, if you missed it, it'll be on YouTube at some point, and you'll be able to catch up with it. But don't miss the first Sunday uh, times of refreshing. They're there for just for blessings, so we can lay back and just enjoy the presence of the Lord and uh, watch God do some great things with other other ministry gifts. Amen. Amen. There's other ones out there. That's what you are, right? A ministry gift. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. So last week, and, and, and as I got into this, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, but one of the things that I discovered. I want you to turn to your Bibles to Galatians, the third chapter. Um, turn to Galatians 3. Uh, one of the things that I'm discovering, and I'm doing it in such a way that it's coming by revelation, coming by study. Um, I'm discovering that uh, a lot of the institutional belief systems that we've had for years in the church simply don't add, uh, hold water or add up in many cases. Um, not everything, not everything. There's some fundamental truths that will never change, amen? Uh, there's, there, but there's always an, uh, an attempt of the enemy. There's always an attempt of the enemy to try to uh, substitute the the uh, and I use this word kind of tongue in cheek theology of God. You know, uh, if you study the word, you know the theos rep rep represents and represents God. But and theology is the study of God. It's kind of hard to study God without His Word. I'm just saying. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to study God without having an intimate fellowship with Him. You, every time you get on your knees, you're actually studying God. So people say, well, no, I'm not. Well, yes, you are, because what He's doing is He's imparting part of Himself into you. Yeah, right. yeah. That's what He did when He gave us Jesus. So, so with that being said, uh, but some of the things that have been instituted by man, or by, when I say man, I mean men, mankind, not just men, but men and women as well. We have to be careful that we're not believing it just because somebody taught it to us. Right. right. Jesus, Jesus, when he was in the, when he was in uh, on the earth in his in his ministry, uh, he was he had no problem with challenging this uh, systematic belief system of the day. Uh, well, one of the things reasons why he could challenge it is because stay with now. Understand what we're saying. He was the author of it. 
Right. Yeah. But they added to what he offered. Mm -hmm. Right? They added their own ideas. They added their own philosophies. They added, they added their own requirements to it. And so when he would walk up to somebody, he would challenge why they believed what they believed. It, it, it was more important in one case, you know, we were talking this morning about offense, you know, and, and uh, Jesus deals with them. He, he tells them, he calls them whitewashed tombs or sepulchres. And, and he tells them they're hypocrites. They're, you know, they're vipers. You know, he's very... Jesus is not polite to these people. Okay? He's not. No. He's not endearing. He is saying, you know what? You don't know what you're talking about because I'm standing in front of you and you don't know me, but you teach me. Yeah. Come on now. And so, why was it? Yeah, it's absolutely critical. Why? Why was it necessary to do this? Because he loved them, even though they didn't love him back. Come on, preach. And so, in the society that we live in. We love people that may not necessarily love you back. Yes. Come on, come on. Yeah. Stop looking for it. Yes, mm. You know, I, I hate to be so black and white with you, but I'm going to say it like this, even in the church. Right. Uh, right. Or church is, not this church, because we're in perfect harmony. Right? So you, you take your little happy dancing, you know, curtsy down the aisle self to one of these other churches out here and see how much they love you. Uh -huh. Come on now. Right? You may not even go in there and dance. You might just be the wrong persuasion. So 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 Paul 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 challenges his 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 his, his um, followers in the church of Galatia. I told you last week there was no Galatian quote unquote church. It was a group of churches. So he challenges them and says, listen. Why you guys? Why are you guys not acting like them? Come on, yeah. Come on. Yeah. If, if, if the day should ever come, the day should ever come. I don't believe it ever will. You know, I believe that everybody that comes to life once going to stay forever. Okay. Can't tell me what I can't believe. It may not happen, but I can believe. It, okay. So, so, but but it, the day should never come where where I go to another church and I see somebody who is a light pointer but doesn't come anymore. Y'all yeah. <laughs> got that right. Yeah. And I didn't know they don't come anymore. I just know I ain't seen them in a while. Okay? Right. But when I go in there, the, the people that have, have, like yourselves, that have learned how to walk in liberty and love and faith in the kingdom start acting like some of them. Yeah. 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 Come on. Come on. Can I use this example? You stay right there. You don't stay. Can, I, can I use this example? I, I, I'm the Kalers who have been coming for a few years now, a couple years now. I, I'm learning and have learned about Mike that he he really does have some anointed hands. Now do what y'all want to do with that, okay? I'm just saying. But it would be disastrous if. The next time I saw Mike, he didn't believe in healing anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because somebody came and told Mike, you know, I just don't believe that much. They might say, I know more Christians that don't get healed than them. Does that make no. any difference at all? No. no. Not when you're the one that got hit. Right. Right. Are you feeling me? Yeah. But, but now I use that as an example. I know he's not going to do it. That's why I use that as an example. But here's what happened with the Galatians. The Galatians started in liberty. And, and we've read all the way up to this point in, in chapter 3 and beyond. But they started in liberty. Paul comes in and says, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I am a representative of the Most High God. He doesn't call himself an apostle. He just says, here am I, who I used to put people like you, persecute you, take you to the prisons, put you in jail, kill you. This is what I used to be. And now, on my journey to, to come find more of you, I've encountered the living God. And the living God knocked me off my donkey. He didn't kill me. Why didn't he kill me? I don't understand because everything I read in the, re the theology and the re religious books and teachings, everything I read said he was going to kill me. He was mad at me. Doesn't like me because, are you feeling me? So when I walk into your midst today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting Paul talking, he says, guess what? I'm free. Yeah. I've been delivered. Yes. I used to be, I used to think that the only way you could come to God was if you had, you know, uh, 13, not 12, 13 degrees. 
And anybody that had 12 degrees was not worthy of the kingdom. I used to think that if, if you were, if you were uh, 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 of the wrong persuasion, a non-Jew, that you had no business being alive. <coughs> I used to think that the Jews that were alive that stopped following Ju Judah, uh, 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 Judaism, thank you, and started following this Christ, this anointed one, if you say, were fools and they deserved to be killed because I was that man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And the Apostle Paul says to them, and such were some of you. Yeah, sure. But you're not that way anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You used to be sick. But now you're healed. Amen. I'll stay on this side because I got a good amen. You used to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Boy, it's one thing to be broke. <laughs> but when you know busted and disgusted on top of it, come on, somebody. <laughs> right? Right? You know? And, and, and now you have found out that God is not stingy. Amen. God has no problem with you having things as long as things don't have you. Yes. Yeah. Why would he only build you a house in heaven? Come on, somebody tell me. Why would he do it? He wouldn't. But the problem is, we have been taught by these infiltrators, these, these ones who have come in, I, I call it what, what Barney would call it, an interloper. We've been, we've been hoodwinked and flim flam and bamboozled by these people that have insisted that we got to live by the regulation of the word instead of the life of the word, and it does not work. It won't work. That's what it's going to work. Amen. That's what he was doing. And I don't go to any other churches. Y'all know that. I mean, you know, so I almost said something that I shouldn't say. So back in. So with that being said, there's a lot of churches that still believe that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me let me keep going just for sake of time. Okay. Now Galatians three, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read this from the expanded Bible. Now I'm gonna get out your way. Verse uh, four. And I'm reading from the expanded Bible. Expanded Bible. Were all of your experiences wasted, or have you suffered so much for nothing? We we know the backstory. You've, we've already read this. He's talking about having received the Spirit now. And having received life because of the Spirit of God inside of us. Amen? And what Jesus Christ has done. But he, they, they turn back to religious law keeping. So he says, were all of your experiences wasted? I hope not. Right? If indeed, not for nothing, does God give you the Spirit and work miracles among you because you follow the law? No. Say no. 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 He does these things because you heard the good news and say believed it. Believe it. Now, verse 6 is where I pick up. And I'm only going to go down a little bit. And there's a couple other things I want to throw in here. Verse 6 says the scriptures say the same thing about Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham believed God. And God accepted Abraham's faith. Listen. And that faith made him right with God. Look up at me for a minute. In other words... Abraham got born again the day he encountered God, and God asked Abraham, will you do this? And Abraham said, yes, I will. Right. There was no rule keeping. Amen. No, it makes your mind go tilt, because everything they taught you is that, you know what, I, you know what, I can pull this room, I'm not going to, but I can pull this room just from your thought life, just from knowing mind and throwing all that in there, and I guarantee you we could find more reasons why people aren't saved than are saved. Right, right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I better not say that either. <laughs> For some reason, I better think I'm still here. <laughs> Keep going over here and want to say something that I ain't. So, so, so with that, not you, I didn't say you, I'm just saying. Uh, but with that, listen, if, 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 if I am, again, how many of you, how many of you have been to churches where women are not allowed to preach? Oh, oh, oh. Well, you been? How, okay, now, how many know of churches where women are not allowed to preach? Okay, all right, all right, come on. Now, how many know a woman preacher? How many? Listen. How many of you know? How many of you know a good woman preacher? Yeah. How many of you know a good woman preacher that can preach a whole bunch of men under a table? Yeah. Are you feeling? Yeah. So because they don't believe it, they don't receive it. So anybody that sits—oh, help me, Lord! Anybody that sits in their midst 
comes up with the thinking that you know what? You are out of order because you allow women to speak in your company. Uh -huh. mm. Out there. And what they will do is they will take take verses, and I'm not on time, you, you know what I'm talking about. They will take verses out of context and say, well, you know, it's not right for a woman to usurp authority over a man. Give, 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 give me, yeah, exactly. She said, just read the next chapter. Give me a microphone. Give me a microphone. Where's the microphone? Where's the microphone? Where's the microphone? Okay. That's okay. Do this. Do this. Listen. This is what? A timepiece. A clock. Okay? I'm giving this to her. This clock represents my willingness to give her the authority of the clock. She is the, uh, she is the keeper of the time. She now has it. Did she take it from me? No. She received it from me. Yes. Come on. Give it back. And so in my giving her the authority to be able to speak as the oracle of God, has she usurped anything? No. 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 Because it was given to her. Right. Listen yeah. to me. Why is it that we will say that? I know why. But why is it? And you know why. They will, we will say that about women. But yet we, as, as uh, or they, in this day, what we're talking about, would come in and speak freely about a God that they did not know. Mm. Come on they never had a relationship with him. That's who Paul's talking about. He's saying be careful because these people are trying to take you back under the legalistic jurisdiction of, of themselves. And, and you know as well as I did, God didn't give them authority to do that. Now who's the usurper? Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, okay. I just want to make sure you get the good context here. What verse did I leave yet? Seven or eight? Six. Six. Okay. Uh, so he says, he goes on here, the scriptures say the same thing about Abraham. Abraham believed God. God accepted Abraham's faith, and that faith made him right with God. Okay? Uh, King James says it was a credit to him for righteousness. So, you can write down Genesis 15 and 6. That'll help you if you want to study that further. So you should know that the two, listen, the true children of Abraham are those who have what? Faith. Say faith. Faith. Not that are Christians. Paul writes to the Thessalonian church, he says, knowing that not all men have faith. That's true. He's not talking to unbelievers. Stop. Get unbelievers out of your thinking. These books were not written to unbelievers. They were written to Christians of the day. Right. Were they not? They were written to, written to disciples of the day. So, so he's writing and saying, even in your, in your galleries, not everybody's going to have faith. Right. But that shouldn't affect your faith. Right. You should have an experiential uh, 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 track record, as it were, of how God has come through for you time yes. and time and time again. Yes. Yes. If you ever get tired, and you will, if you ever get fatigued, and you will, if depression tries to hit you, you might. And if you go through bad times, remember the good times and what God has done for you. Yes. 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 Thank you. He's been better than, than, than the times have been bad. Yes. yes. He's been better. Yes. You know, let me... Uh, Get off the okay. Verse 9. Yeah, no, let's go back. This good news was told to Abraham beforehand. Before what hand? Before before the book was written. Before Jesus showed up on the scene. It was it was told to, to Abraham. So he's God preached, the Bible says God preached before the gospel. Say the gospel. gospel. The gospel is nothing but good news. Good, right? Okay? So he goes on to say and, uh, that God would make I won't skip any. And God, uh, excuse me, God accepted Abraham's faith, and that faith made him right with God. Verse 7, so you should know that the two children, the true children of Abraham, um, are those who have faith. Number 8, the scriptures telling what would happen in the future said that God would make the Gentiles right through their Christianity. Faith. Through their religion. Faith. Through faith. Judaism. Do they faith. 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 To the denomination. No. By being a Pentecostal. Faith. By being charismatic. Faith. By being Lutheran. No. Faith. By being Episcopalian. Faith. I don't. I can't. Presbyterian. No. Faith. Faith. Right. Faith. All of them. By faith. Yep. Right. So this is how they were made right. This is how we are made right. Say amen to that. Amen. Okay. Amen. This good news was told to Abraham beforehand, as the Scripture says, all nations will be blessed. Through you, right down to Genesis 12 and 3, Genesis 18 and 18. Those are those who reference that. So, verse 9, this is where I'm going to stop tonight. So, all who believe as Abraham believed, glory to God, that is one of the most powerful statements in the word. All who believed as Abraham believed, right, are blessed 
Just as Abraham was. Glory to God. Right? It says, with faithful Abraham. Right? So, when somebody says you're blessed, stop, stop looking. My wife uses this, and there's times I want to, I want to say, add something to it, add something to it when she's teaching or preaching. And this is what we're talking about. If I take this phone, I should have brought some props with me, but if I take this phone, I've done this before, I'm not doing this today, so whoever I hand this to, I'm not giving you my phone, okay? <laughs> you got your own, probably better than mine. But, if I say to you, okay, um, You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. There you go. I say to you, man of God, you are blessed. And you say, a little slow there, Mike. I'm speaking. You got 45 minutes. Just kidding. You are blessed. My giving him this becomes then a what? Blessing. You got it. The blessing of the Lord, the Bible says, it maketh rich, probably, and I think it is, and adds no sorrow with it. It does not, it does not, and it is not talking about an item, it is talking about the what we just read over here in Galatians 3 and I what, uh, 3. What happens is the blessing of Abraham has come on us. Yes. Yeah. It already has. Yeah. Yeah. In that blessing, I, don't, I, I didn't intend to go here today, but I'm, I'm just, in that blessing, is healing. Yeah. 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 Because see, what has happened is, what has happened is, the curse has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. For it is written, cursed is everyone that what? Hangs on a tree. Mm -hmm. That what? That the blessing of Abraham yeah. would come upon who? The Gentiles or those who believe. Yes. Is the is the scripture up there? No. Don't put it up. I just don't put it up here. Okay. I saw him looking that way, like it was they were starting to come back up. Okay. <laughs> With that being said, and I don't have time to go here, but you do your own homework. Deuteronomy, read don't read just part the part I tell you. Read Deuteronomy 15. Deuteronomy 16. Go and read. 26 through 28, just not your favorite parts of 28. Okay, you feeling me? But, but what I'm saying is that under the blessing, right? Not not this, not this, but this. Yes. Yes. Under this blessing, healing yes. is a divine privilege. Yes. yes. Yeah. It absolutely is. Yes. This morning, well, just a few minutes ago, I asked my wife, you're going to speak for me because I. Uh, I'm just telling you a little brief testimony. Uh, Sunday, when we left here Sunday night, we had such a good time. I, had, I can have a good time on those Sunday night services because, like I said, I can just, I'm a worshiper by nature, okay? Uh, by a changed nature. And so what I do is I, I you know, and I kind of restrain myself because, you know, people have certain expectations about pastors. I don't care what your expectation is to me. I'm more concerned about what he thinks about me than you. Hey, right. So with that being said, with that being said, I went home Sunday night and I had an opportunity. My brother went out of town, and so uh, my brother we took the, the trailer back and we're over there. We're just fellowship, and I was sitting down with him. Uh, she'd gone upstairs, and we we're just talking. And my nephew was there, and so I had, I had eaten, you know, nothing nothing crazy. I you know at a certain point I don't eat anyway, but then I ate late, and so I went upstairs in the middle of the night. The room was spinning. In the middle of the night. Okay? And so in the middle of the night, I, I get up, you know, uh, in, in the, you know, the bedroom to go to the restroom, and I realize something's not right. Okay? And I just heard a powerful message. I mean, good Lord, it must have been such a blessing to me. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, this this is not right. And I told her. Uh, and so I started, you know, binding and loosening and granting tongues, you know, all the stuff we do. But you have to be careful. Don't just do it because you know to do it. This is what the Holy Spirit tells you. Right. Right. Mm. Yes. Okay. He might tell you just to say nothing. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. He might just tell you to lift your hands. Yes. Yes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so so I got up that morning, and it was worse. But I had things I had to do, so I had to get up and go, and I did some things. And then, then Tuesday, I mean, I had to get up. I mean, you got responsibilities. You can't lay around in the bed and be sick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know better than that. Come on. You don't get up and go to work. Hallelujah. Don't take care of them babies. Take care of the family. You know what I'm saying? I'm just kidding. But, good. but anyway, so, so the Lord said to me, He said, You are not the sick. Amen. I had to remember that. Yes. And what I realized, and this is what happens, 
When sickness comes, it is my choice to receive it or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, That's right. That's it. Come on now. That's right. The teacher. Yes. Even, listen, even if, I, 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 I don't know why I do this kind of stuff. Holy Spirit, I'm going to stay here and then I'm going to get out of your way, okay? I have had two surgeries on my my left eye. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember the whole month of July? Yeah. That's all I could do not to open my mouth and preach. But my wife took it, so it was good. She didn't use serpent. I gave it. <laughs> <laughs> and she did an amazing job, right? Because she's anointed. She's anointed as I am. Yeah. Yeah. Less anointed. <laughs> Maybe less anointed. Oh, oh, no. anyway, anyway, anyway. So, so I went to the doctor. The doctor said surgery didn't work. Like, wait, 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 wait a minute. Now I'm not against doctors. Y'all got to know that, okay? Right. I'm not against them. I'm preaching against them. I'm telling you that Jesus is a healer. Right. If you don't apply the word to your life, you better use something, or the devil's going to take you out of here. Okay? That's right. I don't believe in doctors, and I don't believe in Jesus. Well, just die. Right. Anyway, right. anyway, 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 anyway. Okay, so, so with that, though, they, 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 gave, they did another one. I gave them permission to do another one. They had to have my permission to do this, okay? And I had peace about it. I said, go ahead, it's okay. It's okay. We're trying to save your sight for the future. Okay? Because I've had this thing pronounced over me since I was early 20s. When I first found out about it, when I went to the military. And they told me, you've got way crazy eye pressure. I didn't know. You're 20. You don't care about eye pressure. What do you care? About eye pressure. But, but, as I got born again, I realized I don't have to carry that. Right. So I'm sitting in the doctor's office. I was uh, just coming back, recovering, saying, this is this past week, and feeling better. I'm starting to feel strong again. I went to the doctor's office, sat in his office, and the Lord said to me, this time is the last. Okay, come on, come on. Now, I say that because they want to do another surgery. And so my wife and I, we got before God, and we talked about it. And I still haven't, you know, I haven't heard one way or another. I don't have, I'm not, I have no fear about doing this. But he said, this time is the last. Yes. Right? Now, why am I saying that? My eyes, because I don't feel, I don't feel high blood pressure or fear or high pressure. Right, right, right. right. I don't feel it. And what the devil does is he tries, he will put it in your mind long before you feel. Yeah. 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 Through the power of suggested word. Yeah. Yeah. And he will see what you will do with it. Right. And he already knows that you don't have to take it. Yeah. Right. Isaiah writes in, in Isaiah 51, I mean, it says, whose report will you believe? Yes. 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 And so, and, and, and he knows the answer because he asked the question prophetically. But what I'm telling you is that healing, what the devil is, the devil is, is, is trying to take your healing, not just put sickness on you. Right. Yes. Yes. He's a thief. Yes. 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 And a liar. And a liar. Yes. Yes. Okay? Now, that's healing. Yes. How about prosperity? He does that too. Yes. Why would God... Save you, clean you up, make you feel good, smell good, look good. No, 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 let's, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. I'm going to say this, okay? I'll pull you one of the toes in. That's what I'm saying tonight. But for anybody, now all y'all little, y'all been little Christian cuties the whole life, and y'all ain't never done nothing, no do dirty, and, and, and terrible Tommy, and, and, and uh, lazy Lynette, and all this other stuff. You, you ain't never been that, okay? You ain't never been that. You know what I mean? You use your name. You use your own name. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you've been good all your life and they never had no, uh, let's say, a club experience, Amen. praise God for you. You got a great testimony. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Great testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Astro raise a hand on that one. Okay, I'm just like, <laughs> but I, I know when I used to go out, I look good. Yeah. 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 I look good, bro. I'm talking to the wrong side. Yeah. <laughs> Right there, because we have kids in the yeah. Don't look at me like that, because see, I'm there right now. People are doing what I'm telling you. Yeah. you and one day, they might, they will get born again and be sitting right next to you. Yeah. And you can relate to them, because all you've ever done is be a good excuse. You got to get a new revelation. Yeah. I love that guy. Come on. I, my 
My Lord. You have to deny him? Yeah. So it's a my Lord. Uh, it's not. Plus, now what? We got we got five. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Where we at? Fourteen? Yeah. Then you got a phone call from somebody on her side, because that was on my side. Her side. And how many came? Three. Three? We have to what seventeen? Yeah. Is that it? Seventeen people. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 one more. Who's it? Don't name me. Yeah. Don't name me. Yeah. Eighteen. Oh. Eighteen people live in the house. That's the Christian thing to do. <laughs> well, now listen, 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 listen. Oh, y'all, y'all know the answer now. Where, where, where were y'all 25, 30 years ago? <laughs> y'all could have gave up on your phone call and said, what you doing, you know? Look, I picked it up in the spirit. Don't let them in. <laughs> You know? So anyway, so they came and and woo, what we got to do? Lord Jesus, yeah, we're the So you know, you know, they 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 just do for little shit unless they transferred into it, which they wasn't happening. Then they nobody had the house, but she had. Hallelujah. So anyway, so we ended up going. Let me hear it. So I'm going out my 15 minutes. Now I'm like that. So we keep going. And so we're staying, and she and I start learning how to pray. Quickly. I'm telling you Anyway, we're, listen, listen, listen to me. This is important. Now listen to me. Were our hearts in the right place? Yes. yes. Were our heads? No. no. Was our money? No. no. Money was tight. Yes. No. And we started praying. We started praying. And we learned how to pray. I know you did. We started. We started praying and learned how to pray in the spirit. Things started happening. Here. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. Here, listen now. Listen. I'm gonna give you some some details. And yeah, you have to get the rest of the story sort later. Of we end up. I, I, Pay, pay the rent on time. Praise I didn't even have a job. Praise the Lord. I can't tell you how to have I didn't have a job because nobody would hire me. I just come out of the Air Force. I was marketable. I knew I was marketable. But they didn't want to hire me. That's okay. Because I knew that I had an enemy that was working against me. Yes. Right? So, driving bad, drove a car. We, we drove a car one time. You had to drive it before, when it was uh, daylight savings time ended, you had to drive it and get back wherever you were going by 5 o'clock. Because the lights didn't work. That's the truth. Come on. Am I right? That's the truth. So what we would do? We had a, I had a job at night. One place. I had a job at night. So what she had to do was load up the kids and take them and come on, hurry up, y'all, because Daddy's got to go to work. We can't get Daddy to work. And she drove me across town and dropped me off, and I had to sit there until my shift started so she could get back before the lights. Before the before. You feel me? Because we want to stop thinking. We had money to fix it. Now that's how, anyway, so, so during our learning how to pray, the Spirit of the Lord started talking to us. Now I didn't know I was living out from under the curse because I was doing things that were bringing the curse back on me. It wasn't God. And I couldn't bring it all on the devil. There was a lot of enemies in there. Right. Yeah. God said, what did he tell us? We're praying one day. He said, move. He told us to move. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I got, you know, this nice house. My kids love this house. I like this house. He said, move. <laughs> True story. When I started learning, I knew moving was in order. Necessary. We moved, we moved up the street pretty much, around the corner, up the street, a couple blocks away. How big was that house? Did you touch both walls? Because then I, I got long arms. I, I could almost touch both walls with my arms. Standing in the middle of the room. Now something called that a shotgun house. Yeah. Or something called it here. Okay. So 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 but but then I started thinking, this is worse than before. Size wise. Well, was it actually worse than before? No. No, no. Because what God was doing is he was teaching me how to come up under the truth of his word, which meant, listen, which meant that it might look like he was getting worse. But it was actually getting better. 
Remember when God went to when God told Abraham to leave his family? Mm -hmm. You know how significant a decision and how important that was. Family was family was the identifier. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're the, the, matriarch, the patriarch of the family, the matriarch of the family on one side, you did everything in familial circles. Yes. But God, and see, many times what God will do with you, He'll pull you out of something to, to, in order to put you, and you feel like you're out here by yourself. But you're never alone because the presence of God and the angels of the Lord, the promises of God, you know, uh, the covenant of God, all of these things are there with you. And so, listen, I said all that to say, just because I'm running out of time. Now, now I'm, I'm looking at how I'm doing now. Glory to God. Come on. Amen. <laughs> My bills are paid. Amen. I, I, I mean, our, our debt reduction is significant. The Lord is it is the Lord is good. Yes, I'm telling you what, why? What has he done? It didn't happen overnight. No. Come on. And, and I would tell you, if I don't come to Iowa, I don't believe it happens at all. Oh, it could happen in my own strength. Yeah. And that is the challenge for most of us in here today. That's true. Yeah. This is the challenge now. If you don't get anything else out of what I said, get this. God doesn't want you doing it in your strength. He wants you doing it in your faith and the strength of his covenant that he made to Abraham. Yes. And if you will but put him to the test, he'll come through every time. There's not a, there's not a disease that is that has been known to man or will ever come that can take you out of here. There is not a level of poverty that can stop you from being a blessing. Amen. Because his word says that he, he, will, he, will, he will bless you exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Amen. Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. Yes. But it's according to the power that works in you. Yes. What is working in you? Yes. It's the revelation of the word of, of, of Paul asked the question, wait a minute, who has been with you? Why are you trying to do it yourself again? It would be stupid for me to go back and live in that same house. Yeah. Remember what I know. Yeah. It would be crazy for me to go and just sit in a doctor's chair and say, yeah, I got that. Mr. Roberts, you got this. Okay, I got that. I'll take that. Yeah, can you throw in an extra measure of this disease too, by the way? <laughs> come on, bring it down. Let's die. Let's go ahead. You know, so come on. You know, that sounds stupid. Uh, but if I say this, listen to me. If I say to somebody, you know what? Uh, boy, it's flu season. I can say it in a church setting and people agree with me. <laughs> I know I can say it out there and you're plenty of agreement. Yes. <laughs> but if I say and sometimes in here, not this room, but if I say I'm healed and I got stuff flowing out of every orifice, right. are you going to call me a liar? Or are you going to say, I agree with you, brother? I agree with you, brother. But if I go out there and say I'm healed, they're going to laugh at you. Right. But now, who am, I, who am I Who am I getting in agreement with? Am I getting agreement with them? Or am I getting agreement with what God has said about me? He's called to heal. He's called to prosper. Listen, stop, stop being selfish with the prosperity. Yeah. Yeah. And I ain't talking about giving it what you pull out your pocket. I'm talking about why not just use your faith. I, I, she and I have already discussed it. We, we, we're like, okay, well, you know, we, our faith has not been relaxed at all over this vehicle that we're believing for. But then all of a sudden, something started to shift. My eyes started to look at another one that's looking kind of good. And when I drive up here, don't y'all say a word. Amen. Don't say it unless it's hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I steal it. I'm not going to steal it. And it ain't coming with your money. When, 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 I'm telling you, I'm just telling you now. You know what I'm saying? Because I like looking good. I like driving good. I like eating good. Don't tell me what I can have and can't eat. Come on, man. Not when your Bible says not all when you need to use wisdom. Well, say that when your car out there won't start. Let me see how much wisdom you got. Okay. Uh, 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 mm. <laughs> More than enough going in. What else is in that covenant? My family. Yes. 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 That's more important to me than the car. Amen. More important. I, I know. See, sir, I, you know, I, I don't want to be healed and have my family go to hell. Right. 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 That's right. That's why would I even try to think that that's the case? God made the promise to Abraham and his yes. seed. Yes. 
When I start learning how to be healed, I'm supposed to tell my son. I tell my sons all the time, y'all better be using the word or you better be going out here for going to a doctor. That's true. Yeah. Because some of this stuff is generational. Yes. yes. I can't change it like that. On that level, I cannot change it. Only God can. But I can certainly put a command on heaven and command the curse to cease. It's yes. operation against yes. my family. And somebody better be standing up saying and taking authority yes. and stop being all concerned about what people think about me. Yes. 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 Say black people have high blood pressure. No, uh -huh. I ain't agreeing with that. I'm gonna live a long time, and I'm not gonna be poor doing it. Better stop there. Some more stuff that may come out that may not, may not be the opportunity to say today. But you know, so when Paul writes these things, he's writing to them saying, "Listen, you guys have been set free." Don't go backwards. Don't, don't, don't. See what happens. When, I know your Bible is close. What happens is the desire to go backwards. Listen to me now. Yeah. Is because of the familiar. Yes. Yeah. 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 The familiar things. Yeah. If, 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 and I did this. Okay, I'm talking about me. When we were living in that situation, until I put this into operation. That situation was still there and would still be there today, mm -hmm. to some degree, if not for the shifting of this. Yes, right. Romans yes. 12 says that my mind should be renewed, right? And so I'm renewing my mind. Now here's where here's where I'm going with this. I learned a lot of people learn how to live with less than. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. And it does not necessarily. Now it's not always bad. Understand me now. Hear me well, because the Bible says that you have to learn to be content in whatsoever state that you're in. Yes. But that contentment does not mean to be stationary. Amen. It means to be aggressively pursuing the things that God has placed in front of me. Because unless I do that, I will stay in this condition. And and, and it's not bad. It's not a bad thing touching both walls until you got 19 people in the house. <laughs> And ain't nobody got a job worth nothing. And the, the responsibility for the bills now is on you. Yes. The light bill comes due. Yes. The gas bill is due. It gets cold in North Carolina too. Yes. I'm just saying. Somebody got to pay that thing. But with Jesus, if I put my reliance on him, he'll begin to clear my mind of all the clutter. He'll take me from what's familiar and easy and put me in a place that I, it is required out here that we live by faith. Yeah. And you can see that pattern all throughout the Bible. Yes. All throughout the Bible. Name one, name, name a person. Name one Bible person. A, per, a famous one. Name one. Just name one. Deborah. Deborah. How did Deborah become a judge? By faith. Mm -hmm. She was the only female judge of Israel. Mm -hmm. Tell me that's not some responsibility. Mm -hmm. Talking about usurping authority. Wow. My God, men had to come and bring their, their issues in front of this woman, but she was anointed by God. Amen. And made sound decisions. Give me another one real quick. Joseph. Joseph. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. How did Joseph live? My God, the man did nothing wrong but believe God. Uh, yes. Woo, man, I'm preaching myself happy. Uh, all you do is believe God. Yes. And in believing God, they take you from, from hard luck to no luck. Yes. And from no luck to the prison. Yes. Uh, you running away from women and they running after you and you the one that go to jail. <laughs> Hashtag, <Right>. me Joseph. <laughs> You don't see record where Joseph complained, baby. No, he knew something about God, and he's like, listen, I know I'm not here justly. I know it's tough. Yeah. But the vision that I had Amen. showed those sheep bowing down to my sheep. So if I can stay with that vision, yes. God will get me. Next thing you know, he's, he's 10 hours away from going from the pit to the palace. Yeah. How many, how close are you to the deliverance and the breakthrough that God has for your life? You believe in God, but some, how close are you to the complete diagnosis of total healing? When they told you always be sick and always got to have it, how far away are Joseph was five hours away and didn't know it. Come on, somebody. And you don't know because you recognize that it's not about when you get delivered. It's already being delivered that resides on the inside. He was five minutes away. Five minutes. 
and the call was on its way. I believe it took time for it to get down to the dungeon because he was way deep down, deep in the dungeon. And you know they didn't have the dungeon right next door. Nope. <laughs> Three minutes away from God delivering him. How do you get it? By faith. All of a sudden, you hear this, Joseph! Mm. <laughs> I had to believe that he, I don't know if it was dark in there or not. They didn't have no electricity. I know that much. <laughs> so he's in there, and I had to believe that he probably thought, does anybody know I'm even here? When you are at your worst and you are in a situation and it feels like you are all by yourself, God knows exactly where yeah. you are. All you gotta do is be faithful. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 30 seconds. He hears the clatter on the cobblestones as it were. Joseph, come forth. Huh. And I can believe this. Uh, he was probably thinking, is there a deeper dungeon than this one? Because <laughs> that's all he had. Now, you've been summoned by the king. Mm. Come on. Oh, Am I going to die? <laughs> he didn't know. Right. And many times I'm telling you, it's in that not knowing or that uncertainty that the devil tries to work us over. Yes. Am I going to have a job tomorrow? Am I going to get the woman that I've been believing God for? Am I going to get the husband that'll come home somebody? Am I, is the money ever going to flow? Is my healing ever going to manifest? Am I my kids ever going to serve God? Yes! Yeah, because the creator of the universe has already called it so according to Galatians 3 yeah. the blessing of Abraham has come upon us stand to your feet the blessing of Abraham is on you yeah. I said the blessing of Abraham yeah. Yeah. you need to let the blessing oh. of Abraham just flow all over you yeah. just let it just change your mind and your thinking yes. thank you ha. devil says you're sick no I'm not no I'm not we have a, we have a, 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 we, we've got people that have really struggled with this over the years. I get it because I know where you come from. And one sister said, I just feel like I'm lying. I said, well, wait a minute. That makes God a liar. Yeah. Which one is a liar? You or he? How about you? <laughs> she was struggling with that thing so bad and we tried to work with it. Eventually she couldn't do it anymore. She just, I, I just, but I have the flu. I said, darling, you're not getting it. We're not, we're not blabbing and grabbing, naming and claiming like this little, 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 little colloquialism that they like to use. But what I'm telling you is I am saying what God says about me. Yes. Yes. How can you agree with salvation but not agree with the healing that comes with it? Because right. yeah. yeah. your mind's not in you. Yes. But your hands are full of Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Ah. We delight ourselves in you because you delight in us. Papa, you sing over us. You dance over us. You delight yourself. When we walk into your courts, you get so excited to see us. You are, you, I, I just know it to be true, Jesus, that you look and say, my daughter is here. My son is here. Not just in church, God. We only do this once, once a week and most. But when we go into the secret place of the Most High on a daily basis, when we go in the night season or in the day season, you are there to receive us and remind us of who we are. We are the redeemed of the Lord. We've been bought with a price and we say so. Yes. I don't care what other people say about us. What I did does not define who I am. Right. What I've been and what, I, what happened to me in my past will not hold me hostage to my future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You may feel like you don't need it right now. You may feel like you're in a good place right now. But live long enough. You will need the delivering, sanctifying, saving power of the Holy Ghost to take you to a new level of understanding of how much God loves you. Hallelujah. You got babies out there making bad decisions. You got things going on in and around your life. And if it's not in your house, it's in your neighbor's house. Or it's in your, your boss's house or your subordinate's house. It is there. And you need to take who you are and how how blessed you are and show them the goodness of God in the land of the land. Yes. Take the gospel of the good news. Yes. I close with this. The Bible says that though he was so very rich, speaking of Jesus, yet he became poor that we through his poverty might become rich. And it is not about spiritual richness. Stop 
putting it out of context and trying to make it something that it is not. The Apostle Paul said it, and he was talking about material possessions because he knows how bad the kingdom needs them in this realm. When you get to heaven, it don't matter. But till then, you need money, you need stuff. And you need to be healed in order to use that stuff properly. And you need to renew your mind to know what to do with money before God's going to give you any. Yeah. If you have a purpose for being healed, you need to get a purpose and then God will manifest that healing because He knows you know what to do. You won't yeah. skip out on the assignments that He gives you because all of a sudden you got a new, uh, new lease on life as it were and then you go out and you hit the beach instead of hitting His house. Come on, somebody. Stop condemning them babies and start saying you are born again. But they're not. Aren't you the God, the son or the daughter of God, who calleth those things that be not as though they were? You don't walk around calling them a sinner and a devil and a demon, do you? No. You better not be. Amen. You better not be. Call them that until you see it manifest. Give God praise before it shows up. They come home one day and say, Mama, guess what? Mommy, guess what? Mother, guess what? Whatever they say, I've accepted Jesus over there and they they ten cities away. And all of a sudden, on the other end they hear, click, Mom, 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 Mom. Because you laid out in praise before God because you finally the prayer has been answered. But it takes you saying something about it yes. to get it done. Right, right. Yes. Father, we lift our hands to you and surrender in complete praise and worship. You are the God of the universe, and yet you are my closest lover, Amen. my closest friend. Amen. Hallelujah. You have drawn me out of things that I simply did not know I needed drawing out of. You changed my mind. You changed my address, my zip code. You changed me from 6th Street to Healing Street. Hallelujah. I was impoverished, and you made me wealthy. God, I had no direction and no purpose. I was walking aimlessly, and you brought me home. Now, Father, extend that love to these, your sheep. Let the beloved of God feel your presence like you, like you even now I sent your presence now. Let him have all of you. Yes. Not part of you, all of you. I know you're willing to give it freely. So now change their intricacies of their thinking as their minds are renewed to the word of God so they can see the vistas of revelation that you have for them. Amen. So they can attain the unattainable. Yes. And they can reach to the heights, Lord God, that have seemed to previously be out of, been out of their reach. Yes. But with God, all things are possible. Yes. So by faith we declare, we leave this place blessed, prosperous, whole, and set free. There is nothing that lacks in our life. Nothing missing, nothing broken. We believe it. Come on, you believe it? Yes. 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 Gotta believe it. Yes. You never say what you don't believe. You, You'll never say it. Hallelujah. You'll never say it. Yes. I hear the Lord say this, I'm going to say it real quick. That there are people who walk around saying, my heart attack, my cancer, my diabetes, my glaucoma, my mental illness. Stop it now. Yes. It's too dangerous to keep saying. Come on now. I'm not coming down with you. Just hear the scream of the Lord. Stop it now. It's not yours. I hear the Lord say. I took that for you. Yes. And I will not release yes. it back to you. It is not my desire to give what I took back to you. Listen to me. But your enemy will give you new. He will give you another case of cancer, another case of diabetes. Even though I took the old, if you release him to give you new and you accept it, it is yours. And that, that relates to anything, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Anything. I'm always broke. Stop it now. My kids are so bad. Stop it now. My husband is this. He's such a jerk. Stop it now. Because that's what he's going to become. My wife, I can't step. Stop it now. I'm going to stop you now. Make a quality decision. I'm done with it now. Hold yourself accountable with your own words in your mouth. Can you do that? Yes. With the help of the Holy Ghost, I know you can. Give the Lord a great big clap. Amen.